Fred, what was the message to the team in the locker room? Great season. Not one thing to, um, we can be disappointed in the day, but you win 29 games, a Big Ten championship, you're in the Elite Eight. Um, today was not our day. Um, nobody expected that today. Um, but um, they were phenomenal. Um, and, uh, you know, I thought that uh, it was a, it was a, we were in a good place at half, uh, getting off to the slow start. Um, we didn't shoot the ball well. I liked our looks. I felt great about them. But, uh, yeah, what a great season. Hold your head high. This will be one that, uh, um, you know, they, they, they had a lot of fun. We didn't have bad days. We, they were a joy to be around. And, like I said, I'm the most blessed person on the planet that I got to coach that group. How emotional were things in, in the locker room? Very, very. And I'm a very emotional coach. And, and um, the players get that way. And, and when you care about people, and uh, it doesn't end the way you, you want it to. It, it's it's very very emotional, and uh, uh, I'm the worst. And um, uh, I love each and every one of them. They're all going to be successful. We just weren't today. Neither team was great on offense in the first half. In the second half, what did you see in that opening? I mean, you, you seemed like you're trying to. Well, we got good we got good looks and didn't make them, and you got to score with them, and then they got out in transition and. and uh, um, you know, it, it was Donovan was the difference. Um, you feel great at half. You know, they're made one three and and we're guarding and and uh, you know we couldn't get Terrence un get get him going and and um, but you know you didn't give them credit. Fred, how is Donovan just that much of a unique presence that you've seen all year? You guys were two of the ten on layups in the first half. Well, he's so athletic. You know, we I mean Zach's bigger. But he's he's just got a completely different level of athleticism that, that you don't see, and I mean that's why they all like him at the next level. Um, but um, yeah, he's they're 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 very good, and like I said, I I didn't mind the shots we were getting. Uh, you just have to make them, and I don't know, tired, whatever the reason, uh, I I don't know, but. Uh, you know, and, and some of those cuts and some of those plays are plays that we've been able to do against uh, others. We just couldn't against him. The way Terrence had been rolling through this postseason, we were surprised all that he wasn't able to get going. I mean, I, I know he's yeah. kind of a bowling ball towards the basket, but Klingon changed a little bit of that. Just sure, his sure. That's what a great player does. And, and uh, you know, he didn't have his best day. And, and uh, um, again, that, that, that made, makes their perimeter defense a little better when, uh, when he's back there. So. Uh, wasn't his best day, but uh, what a great, great season! One for the history books at Illinois. How do you describe Coleman's value to this program? Elite, special. You know, he's right there with Trent and Io, and and you know the so many others. But he, he's he's a guy that's been with us four years. He's grown. He's shown what what he can do in the basketball court. Uh, you know, especially here this season. And um, but uh, you know. Not just as a basketball player, but as a person, and, and uh, great young man. What can the young guys take away from this to, to propel and hold the standard? Yeah, that's the whole. That's the that's the lesson learned. Is uh, one how the abruptness of the end hits you, and how emotional that locker room is when you when you don't. But how good a feeling it is uh, to get so close and and to. To win so many games and and win a championship, and um, we talk about winning a lot, and uh, we won a lot. Uh, today we didn't, but we won a lot, and I think all those guys have, have grown. And uh, I'm their I'm their their biggest biggest fans. Brad, am I wrong to assume that the talk this spring and going into the summer will be three wins short of the goal? Is that sure. Part of the talking point. Sure. We're not talking about anything else in this program. We, to be honest, I you know it. Trump's winning a Big Ten championship. I mean, he can come to this program uh, to, to not win it. And uh, uh, you, you got a little sniff, and we've, we've had some really good teams, and, and um, you know, we've got to just keep getting back. And I said it last year when we lost in the first round. you just got to keep getting back, and uh, that's what makes this special. And, uh, yeah, that's uh, recruiting in the portal. Brad, how will you attack the portal here starting tomorrow, I would assume? Starting tomorrow? tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you got, you got us like a week behind. I, I mean, <laughs> 10 days behind. I mean, it's the most absurd thing in the history of sport, by the way, is what we're doing in the portal while we're playing basketball. 
Uh, this is ridiculous. I've got one coach scouting and two just living in the portal. Uh, I'm making recruiting calls up and down this hallway yesterday as we're preparing for um, an Elite Eight game, and maybe that's my fault. But uh, uh, no, it's rea it's reality. Um, we'll we'll tackle it. We'll figure out what we need, um, and uh, it's been great to us. You know, the University of Illinois has benefited from the portal as much as 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 any team in the country, and uh, uh, we've got a lot to offer and top offense to recruit to, and we'll uh, you know. We'll get out. I think we got one or two, maybe live days, and then we go dead, which is not so good. But um, yeah, we'll get after. Fred, do you anticipate? I mean, do you think you and uh, Simeon are the only coach frustrated by the portal timeline? Do you anticipate a push for a change in that? Well, if anybody has any sense, they will. This is the greatest event we have, and we're doing something to take away from that. It's absurd. Is part of that retaining your own players? Going into the offseason? I imagine it probably is. Yeah. Is it, how, how much more difficult does, it, does that make your job in general, but especially this time of year? Well, I, don't, I just don't know why we're doing it now. I know I get it. 95% of the country's done. But, but like it's still punished for your success? Well, it's the greatest event we have. We, we, should, we should relish these opportunities to, to capitalize on what a great event we have. And um, yeah, I, you know, but. I don't want to get too much involved in that, as I already have, but it's the portal and uh, the timing stakes. Are you getting here to help you win that? Sure, I hope so. I hope everybody wants to be a part of what winning is and what our offense is and what we've done and the, uh, the uh, uh, success we've had over the last five years. We've been as good as anybody in, in, in the country. And, and uh, uh, so, yeah, we, we've... I think we've got a lot to offer and great facilities and great fans. Brad, you said you always planned to get here, but being here, how did it feel? What was it like for you, for the program? It's the best ever. It's the best feeling ever. It's the best feeling ever. I am I mean, we had a great crowd that traveled forever to get here, and we've got the best fans, and we've got great facilities, great administrative support. It, it always makes me feel good when I look around, and it's not just coaches and players in tears. we got administrators. We've got support people. Um, that are so invested in this, and when you get that kind of investment, getting here is a blast, and we had fun. Uh, today was not was not it, but man, everybody got a little feel of that, and, and that that's so special. Brady, so you love coaching this team so much. Did you learn anything from them? Uh, oh, as coach? What, what was that? I learned every year. I, you know, I mean, it was the the to join in and have fun with them. I, I mean, they made me a kid again. Um, you know, they embarrassed me in front of the whole world, making me take my shirt off and um, show my dad bod. But, um, I, you know, you, you got to enjoy the moment. Coaching's really hard. Um, it, it's, it's, it's helping young people grow. But this group never had a bad day. This group never had um, anything but joy. And, and, and that's something that not just in basketball, this whole world can use a little love, but I enjoyed this group a lot. Yeah, a lot of guys were talking, Ty Rogers especially, emotional, talking about this is the last time we're going to be together as a team. For you as a coach, do you get that, that feeling? Does it make you emotional as well? Oh, I'm been tear I've been in tears. Um, I, I dread last days. I, I la The last game feeling is awful, and, and one that you truly enjoy in, in terms of the team, when you enjoy them. For who they are, and not the basketball, not the wins and losses. Um, yeah, it, you know, I call it the abruptness of the end. It hits, and that group will never be together. And I hope truly, when they're brought back to Illinois in 10 years, 20 years, whatever, um, they remember how much fun they had. They'll have long-lasting relationships. Uh, they'll remember a crazy old man that they brought along and did, you know, super soaker squirt guns with, or whatever they're called, and. And um, hoisting trophies and cutting down nets and um, yeah, it, it, it's 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 hard not to get emotional when you when you've got a group like that. Safe to say, Marcus Damask exceeded all expectations you had for him when he walked on campus. And, and more than that, yes, he's he's been nothing but an unbelievable player and an unbelievable human being with an unbelievable work ethic and uh, bought into. Uh, the University of Illinois bought into our program. Just couldn't couldn't have been any better. 
could not have. There's not enough adjectives or superlatives to talk about Marcus Damask. I'm sure you touched on this, but Terrence Shannon just an off night for him. Tough time, tough time. Give them credit. We were what oh, somebody said oh for 19 challenging Donovan. That allows your perimeter guys to get pretty good and pretty aggressive, but. Uh, Tough night. Great season. One for the record books at our place. What was his impact on your program, Brad? Huge. You're talking about a all league, all American, great player, great, uh, uh, unbelievable competitor, uh, a guy that competed at the highest level in anything from Uno to uh, going against the scout team, and um, you know that 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 transcends to every other person on that team that uh, they see that competitiveness. But, uh, um, yeah, great player, got better, worked, wasn't afraid of it. And uh, my hat's off to him. Brad, were you ever worried about the distractions, <coughs> the noise of his situation hurting you guys from getting where you could go? And how did you make sure that it did? Um, we, talked it er we talked about it early, and then we played basketball. And um, all of that stuff was, this group was mature. They were so connected. Uh, we didn't have little clicks. We didn't have any other um, things going on. We just, we just coached and, and, uh, and they played. And it became, um, you know, about the next opponent and the next practice and getting better that way.